Hi! Today we're going to be showing you how to use the liquify tool. Uh, this is more targeted for art than anything else and uh, yeah, let's get started. Alright, first things first, what does the liquify tool do? Well, it does kind of what it says it does. It kind of takes a collection of pixels that you have on a layer and then treats them like they're a liquid so you can move it around and you can distort stuff. Now, this inherently isn't very helpful, but we're going to show you how to actually make it useful. So, uh, first things first, we're going to teach you how to use it. Now, uh, the liquify tool can be found here by going to filter and then liquify. And you'll see, depending on what layer you're on, that's how much information it'll bring up. This tool is layer specific, so it'll only work on things that are on one layer. So that means this whole character is on one layer. But say, for example, we had just a floating head here. Um, if you go to filter and then liquify, it would edit just the head. But you'll see that there's a lot of excess room here because it'll still read the entire canvas. If you wanted to not do that, then, you know, use your lasso selection tool, then filter liquify. Then it brings up kind of a smaller selection for you to work with but uh yeah just for the sake of simplicity i'm kind of going to stick with the entire character just to kind of show you how this tool is useful all right so i'm going to be showing you two main applications for the liquify tool um it can be used for a lot more than that but these are just the two most common places that i'll actually use it for one is for tweaking small details in something that's already painted so i don't need to repaint it again and the second is actually with a sketch adjustment so i have a sketch over here this is of cynthia from pokemon so this is a sketch i'm working with you know we'll go to that layer and we're actually i'm kind of going to show you how we can manipulate it now something really important to note is that if your layer is locked unlock it um, and I'll kind of show you why. So I'll use this for example. Say I lock this silhouette of um, Aerith from Final Fantasy. Then I go into the liquify tool. It'll give you a warning. The transparency for this image cannot be modified. Um, and pretty much what that means is since that information is locked, if I move this, you know, and we we'll kind of make this nightmarish, and we hit OK you'll see it still saves that information, so it'll give you a white canvas. In order to get around doing that, unlock the um, the actual layer itself, then do that. So you'll see if we use the liquify tool now, it won't give us those white edges. And I promise this tool is more useful than just creating nightmare fuel like this, but you'll see, there we go. No more scary white edges. Instead, we just have a scary character. <laughs> So make sure that if you're using the liquify tool that you actually have the layer unlocked. Otherwise, it'll give you those white pixels because it has no info and it's trying to fill it in. So it'll pick that. But uh, for example, with the sketch, um, there's kind of three main tools that you'll be using over here. One is the this is the forward warp tool, and that's pretty much just like a hand tool that'll make it so you can fine tune things. So you know, you can adjust your brush and the smaller you make it, the more fine details that you can edit. So say you want to, you know, edit something about the face or the sketch, you can work with small finite details. Or if you want to edit something major like the shoulder, instead of doing this over and over with 20 different brush strokes, you can make a brush bigger. It'll affect a bigger active area. Um, and then you can actually, you know, move that with more precision. And a neat little thing um, that you can do is that there's a little preview button down here so you can see if your changes are something you want to keep or not. Now keep in mind that I am using the 2021 version of a uh, Photoshop Creative Cloud so if you're not seeing some of these features it might just be because it's not an updated version. Now the forward warp tool is the most useful out of all of them at least for me um, because you can you know kind of just tweak your sketches or tweak your paintings just really small finite details and you know you could decide whether or not you like that then hit OK. I'll kind of show you um, how it gets more useful later on in a painting. So say we have this drawing of Aerith we kind of want to work on the facial details and you know instead of painting things over I'm just going to go to filter and then liquify. We're going to bring this up. Uh, we're going to go to the character. You'll see that we can use the little pinch and pull method here. So we can just very subtly adjust details of the face. Um, for better or worse, arguably, but it's just helpful because it'll help you fine tune some of the details in your canvas. There is also a face tool. So if your program actually recognizes that there is a face in here, it it's 
kind of hit and miss, but it does a pretty okay job of recognizing when there's a face. It'll give you a bunch of different things that you can add it. So you'll see that like you can affect the nose, you can affect the angle of the eyes. So if it's just a little off and you want to fix that, you can bring in the face if you want to. <laughs> uh, you can affect the chin line and even the head angle rotation. So you'll see like just a bunch of really minute details that you can be editing. That's with the face editor over here. And then uh, the last two that I'm sure that everyone would know about, especially if you've seen any kind of YouTube thumbnails, is that there's a bloat and pucker tool. So if you've ever seen like any of your favorite YouTubers have a crazy expression on their face where they do this, <laughs> uh, then that's the bloat. And then this is the pucker tool. So, uh, you know, the, these are kind of tools that um, when used sparingly, these are the kind of tools where uh, less is more. You know, it's really good for fine adjustments, but you'll find it saves you a lot of time because you're not actually repainting over something over and over again if it's just a really minor edit. So I'd say, uh, you know, a good rule of thumb is try to get it as close to accurate as you can the first time and then just let the liquify tool do all the rest. But uh, like I was saying, you know, it's dependent on one layer at a time. So you can only use it for one layer at a time. Uh, so this is definitely a process that would come later down the line or early when you're sketching. But yeah, uh, hope you guys found this video helpful. It's kind of a short and sweet one. Let me know if you learned anything and I will see you later. Bye.